As a boy growing up, Terrence Wilcott would read books and comics. They inspired him to want a life of adventure, and Superman inspired him to want to fly. He dreamed of flying to the stars. Born in Russellville, Kentucky on October 31, 1949, Terry attended school in Louisville and graduated from Southern High School in 1967. He next enrolled at Western Kentucky University in Bowling Green, where in 1974 he obtained his Bachelor of Arts degree in mathematics. He worked for two years teaching math, but the idea of flying and adventure was never far from his mind. He joined the Marine Corps and was commissioned in 1976. His dream of flying came true when he earned his wings in 1978. His military career began with assignments to the VFMA 235 in Kanawe, Hawaii. While there, he attended the Naval Fighter Weapons School at NAS Miramar Top Gun. That was followed by two overseas deployments to Japan, Korea, and the Philippines. In 1983, he was selected as an F-A-18 Fighter Weapons and Air Combat Maneuvering Instructor in VFA-125 Lemoor, California. In 1986, he attended the United States Naval Test Pilot School, where he earned the title Distinguished Graduate. Following graduation, he was assigned as a test pilot project officer for the Strike Aircraft Test Directorate at the Naval Aircraft Test Center in Maryland. Wilcutt flew various other aircraft during this tour, including the F-18 Hornet, the A-7 Corsair II, the F-4 Phantom, and various other aircraft to test a wide variety of projects and classified programs. In all, he has over 4,400 flight hours in more than 30 different aircraft. In January 1990, Wilcutt was selected into the NASA astronaut program and became an astronaut in July of the following year. Wilcutt has been to space four times. In September 1994, he was part of NASA's mission to planet Earth aboard the STS-68, where he served as pilot on the shuttle Endeavour. Its mission was to study the Earth's surface and atmosphere. The crew used radar to create images of the Earth's surface environment and mapping of the global production and transport of carbon monoxide pollution. The project was aided by over 14,000 photographs taken on the mission. In 1996, Will Cutt again served as pilot of the STS-79 aboard the shuttle Atlantis. It was the fourth joint American-Russian shuttle Mir series of missions. The crew docked with Mir 240 miles above the Earth and ferried supplies, scientific equipment, and for the first time, exchanged U.S. astronauts. In January of 1998, Wilcutt was the commander on the shuttle Endeavour for STS-89. During their 138 orbits in space, they transferred more than 9,000 pounds of scientific equipment, logistical hardware, and water. It was the fifth and last exchange of U.S. astronauts to the Mir space station. STS-106 launched in September 2000, again with Will Cutt as commander aboard the shuttle Atlantis. It was a 12-day mission that successfully prepared the International Space Station for the arrival of the first permanent crew. With his four missions, Will Cutt covered 17.9 million miles, 41 plus days, and a total of 1,007 hours in space. Will Cutt retired from the Marines with the rank of Colonel and is currently serving with NASA as Deputy Director of Safety and Mission Assurance at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. As a father himself, Will Cutt has always had a keen interest in kids. He was also quoted as saying, tell them to do the very best they can in whatever they do. I cannot emphasize the importance of obtaining skills in math and science. If they have an interest in those areas, make a career out of them. This country needs all the people it can get in the math and science fields. It's important for our country's future. We, as a nation, cannot afford to fall behind other nations in these areas. Parents need to encourage their children to learn all they can, point out to them how important an education is. They need to read all they can. Being in space has brought about a change in Terry's vision of the world. He has said, during my entire military career, I was trained and taught that the Russians were our enemies and it was my job to always be prepared to defend this country from them. But from space, Moscow looks just like Houston. And they have a beltway around their city, just like we do in Houston. It just suddenly dawned on me that Moscow contains families in it just like mine, fathers who work just like I do and want a better future for themselves and their children. When you see things from a global viewpoint, it really has a strong effect on you. It is therefore fitting that Terence W. Wilcutt, 
who dreamed of the stars and, unlike most of us, was able to get closer to them, be enshrined into the official Aviation Hall of Fame of the Commonwealth of Kentucky.